One thing that is awesome about Cardano that other blockchains don't offer, even proof of stake blockchains like Solana and Polkadot, is the ability to have initial stake pool offerings. There are several initial stake pool offerings going on right now. Hey, my name's Christian, and I'm glad that you guys could attend this nice gathering about Cardano, what's going on in the ecosystem, how I think it's going to just be crushing the, the last part of the year here, probably the fourth quarter and beyond. Um, one of the cool things that I was just involved with was as a Cardano Catalyst community advisor. So I actually got to audit what's going on right now with Fund 6. If you're not familiar with Catalyst, it's Cardano's way of rewarding projects that are building on the Cardano ecosystem. And there's right now $4 million up for grabs in ADA for development projects and different things that are going on. We got a sneak peek it for about a week or so about what is proposed and all of the different things that are happening right now. I went through about 160 different projects, got a chance to read all about them. There was some good, some bad, and some ugly but it was really fun to get a chance to see what's getting built right now on Cardano. As you know, smart contracts were just released. There's not a whole lot that's out there. There's a couple of smart contracts that are running right now, but for the most part, everybody's busy developing their projects. And it's going to be really cool to see what gets built here in the next couple of months. And I think that some of these Catalyst projects will go over really excited me. And I, I think that there's going to be some really cool events that happen and they're supposed to they're supposed to announce a lot of development and the development projects at the summit which is coming up here on September 25th. I always like to go through the Cardano ecosystem map really quickly because you can see there's just a ton of development that's happening. A lot of different projects are getting developed and you know the uh, the amount of buzz that's happening right now is incredible. Uh, especially in Africa. We'll go through a little bit of that. And then at the very end, I wanted to show you too. I just saw on Twitter a video that Charles made back in 2014. I thought it was fantastic. And um, I wanted to share that with you guys because it really adds a, a lot um, to what's happened and what's transitioned from 2014 back in the days of Ethereum, um, where he was one of the co-founders to today and Cardano. So this was one of the really cool things. I don't know if you've seen it or not. It's called Cornucopius. It's an island adventure game, similar to like a metaverse type of environment, which is being developed right now on Cardano. They were one of the catalyst projects that I really liked. Um, these metaverse you know, projects, as you've probably seen with Decentraland and Sandbox, and there's a couple of others that are on Ethereum right now, are really starting to catch hold and really get people's imaginations. I think Roblox being the huge project that went public about six months or seven months ago now, um, and was valued, now it's valued at $50 billion or $60 billion. So there is a lot of demand for these really cool virtual worlds and especially ones that involve NFTs where you can trade non-fungible tokens and earn things and be able to get rewarded for gameplay and just really cool what's happening. There was another one, um, again, in Catalyst called AdaQuest, similar to what, you know, Cornucopius is. AdaQuest is a role-playing game built on the Cardano ecosystem. It's getting built right now by a team in Germany. And uh, again, a really cool role-playing game that allows you to get characters, basically build them up. It has three different types of gameplay associated with it. And you can find different items and get very rare items, sell things, trade things. And again, it's just a, a really novel concept that I think will start to involve a lot more people into the blockchain than are currently involved. You know, I think a lot of people think of Bitcoin is the one and only thing that's there, maybe some DeFi products on Ethereum. But I think with the uh, advent of Axie Infinity, especially on the Ethereum blockchain, people are starting to see that gameplay is going to be one of the real big factors that contributes to crypto adoption and blockchain adoption here. So there's going to be a lot that happens on the uh, ecosystem in the next couple of months that really lends itself to a lot of really cool different types of environments that I think will really start to take hold and, and really launch things into the stratosphere. 
NFTs were another big thing, and I'm not huge into NFTs, but I think one of the really cool projects is Cardano City. It takes a lot of the um, the environment and, and some of the really cool ecosystem of Cardano and involves it in these NFT projects, which I think myself are, are very overvalued right now, but who's to say, right? I mean, that we're on the really early stages of these things and they may continue to go up in value over time. Um, it may be a bubble and at some point here just completely burst and, and go back to normal. But again, NFTs are kind of the buzzword around things. I don't know if NFTs regarding artwork or JPEGs like this will really be the end all be all, but NFTs revolving other things like real world items and uh, you know in gameplay and stuff are gonna really start to take hold here. So DEXs are the other really big thing, decentralized exchanges. Orion's one of the only ones right now that's operating. And the reason why it is, is because it's based in uh, the Ethereum, the RC20 tokens and Binance Smart Chain right now. But their proposal is to become the de decentralized exchange that takes all of the blockchains that are out there and interwines everything and becomes the terminal a la Bloomberg for a lot of different projects that are going on and basically allows you to go to one place, Orion terminal and trade any type of token at any time, anywhere at the best possible price. Um, that's a, a really huge goal for them to achieve. And you know we'll see if it happens over time, but I have gone out there on the Binance smart chain side of it and just um, traded around a little bit. It's it's interesting. Um, I've staked my tokens, done a little bit of yield farming, added some liquidity into their pools, and again, it's a it's it's going to take a little bit of time for it to catch on. But this is one of the projects out there that one of the only ones that is currently functioning. The other big dex that's being developed on the er Ergo blockchain, which is a partner, and it's going to also to be um, linked with Cardano, is the Ergo dex. And they've got their roadmap. They're actually pretty far along. I thought that they were going to be able to launch right after smart contracts came out, but it looks like it's going to take a couple of weeks, if not a month or two, for them to get fully functional. But they are pretty far along on their roadmap, and they are creating a really cool cross-chain decentralized exchange and automated um, market maker as well that's going to allow people to come out and swap tokens and to buy and sell different tokens um, across multiple blockchains. So really cool project that's put on by Ergo. I love Singularity Net, which is AI developed on the blockchain. If you're not aware, there was a really great interview with Big Pay, who um, is a stake pool operator and has a great YouTube channel. Ben Gertzel is the founder of Singularity Net really cool eccentric guy this is about an hour interview that i listened to last night awesome interview about why cardano was chosen by them why they're going to be um, focused mainly 80 percent of their development as far as the ai realm goes is going to be on the cardano blockchain and all of the really cool things that ai is going to be able to do decentralized and it was a really really fun interview but singularity net really cool project again it's going to add a lot of credence to Cardano and what's uh, you know the blockchain that is basically going to allow them to do uh, what it is that they want to do as far as all artificial intelligence development goes in a decentralized environment. Um, last week there was a an ADA pad launch. It was an initial coin offering, and somebody had asked me, you know, what's a good project on Cardano that could 10x? And I was like, well, there's one coming out. It's supposed to do a uh, launch next week. And uh, actually came out the day after we had the meetup. And this was set to launch at four tenths of a, of a cent, which was, uh, you know, I didn't know, you know, I said, it's a risky project like anything else. It may go up, it may go down to zero. You never know with these things. There is a, uh, they have separate launch pads on Ethereum, on Uniswap, on Binance Smart Chain. And this was their fourth one. I believe they have Tron as well. But after seeing what happened on their launch, uh, we can go really quickly and take a look. I think they uh, are trading at 67 cents. So from four tenths of a penny to 67 cents, which is absolutely crazy to me. It's about what 150 times. So their their IDO obviously was extremely successful for people. But for people that are looking for that diamond interrupt, I think that there's going to be a lot more that comes out on Cardano that lends itself to 
the, uh, the, the simple fact that there's going to be some projects that are extremely successful that launch at really low prices and, and go up in value dramatically. And there's going to be others that fail. But this was just an example based on last week's meetup that I thought was, um, you know, kind of a good overview of what can happen, especially in the space. One thing that is awesome about Cardano that other blockchains don't offer, even proof of stake blockchains like Solana and Polkadot, is the ability to have initial stake pool offerings. There are several initial stake pool offerings going on right now. One of them is MELD, and MELD is a lending protocol that's getting developed on Cardano. And there's about six or seven MELD pools that allow you to stake your Cardano tokens and, own, and earn MELD tokens. It's not tradable yet. It's not available yet, but they're having their initial stake pool offering, which is allowing people to basically seed their project. And in return, once the stake pool um, offering is completed, you'll receive the MELD tokens directly into your wallet based on how much was staked and for how long of a time it was staked for. Awesome concept. And if you don't know about it, you can read about you know what the initial stake pool offerings are why they're so different. And instead of having to go out there and, and basically risk losing your money on an initial coin offering or something that's you know not legitimate, at least you're gonna have the ability to hold on to your tokens in your wallet when you're staking your Cardano ADA tokens and earn that initial coin offerings tokens as well. So you're not out of you know hundreds or thousands of dollars by you know, placing your money at risk. This is a good way for you to get involved with the project and also to allow them to fund their project in a fairly safe manner. One of the other projects that's offering initial stake pool offering is MinSwap. Um, if you haven't heard of them, they were in the news based on the fact that they were trying to solve concurrency, um, which is a an issue that they weren't really aware of, but it's an EUTXO problem that needs to basically be solved by smart contracts on the blockchain, allowing concurrent smart contracts to operate rather than sequentially one at a time. There is a way to do that. And IOG, you know, inter input output global, the, the parent basic um, of Cardano has come out with white papers that explain this and other projects like Sunday Swap, I believe, and Occamfy have solved a little bit of the issues and what it is that needs to happen. But uh, MintSwap was just brought up because they couldn't figure it out and uh, basically didn't know how to. And so gave the, the you know, people out there on Twitter an uh, excuse to go out and, and, and badmouth the uh, Cardano ecosystem because uh, they, they realized that there was a you know, a thing that people had to actually solve a problem that was needed to be solved. But Charles quickly took to, to YouTube and basically explained it that uh, as easily as he could in a 20 minute video about, you know, what concurrency is and, and uh, that it's not an issue. It's just something that needs to be solved by each individual project in whatever manner they feel fit. Cardano is amazing in the fact that they're taking a bottom up approach. And I've spoken about this before, but starting off in Africa, which is almost the blind spot of every other blockchain and every other economic incentive program on the planet has gonna give Cardano that ability, that runway to seed themselves, to grow and to become incredibly powerful with people that actually need blockchain more than anybody else. These are people that are, for they don't have identities a lot of them they are are unbanked and they have real really no way to um to compete in the global ecosystem that we've created around the internet and all of the other you know global things that we take for granted being in the united states or other countries that you know have a built out ecosystem already but Cardano focusing on Africa is really going to be an advantage for the fact that they can get a lot of their projects, alpha, beta, and all the way through to you know, completion with societies, governments, and people that really will benefit from them the most. And you know, with the Ethiopia project that's going to bring on 5 million students onto the Cardano ecosystem to you know, the Atala Prism, the digital identity, which is going to be the, the backbone for the project, 
all the way through to, you know, a lot of the things that are happening with Singularity Net, and they're building AI in Africa as well, as we talked about a little bit earlier. The uh, World Mobile Token, which is allowing broadband internet and cellular service throughout all of the small villages and all of the rural areas, and is going to connect 100,000 people this year and millions and millions next year. And they're all going to be brought into that Cardano ecosystem and be able to use their broadband internet connection and their cellular service and be connected to um, identity services and also banking services with MELD and the other tools that are going to be out there is really going to be cool. So there's a lot that I think they're taking the right approach to where other blockchains are saying this isn't going to be profitable for us. You know, we want to focus on those big buzzwords, the DeFi space and the you know, billions of dollars in liquidity locked. Cardano is saying, no, we're going to actually make this functional for people that are actually going to use it. This isn't based on the fact that Wall Street wants us to go out there and create these projects that are only going to benefit wealthy people that are looking to make money extremely quickly. This is going to benefit society as a whole. And I really like that approach. It's so much more thoughtful than you know just the fact of, okay, yeah, this is going to be something that's going to go up in value. No, this is going to add utility and utility on a global level. So love that about Cardano. So could Cardano's cryptocurrency overtake Bitcoin and Ethereum? Probably not anytime soon, but a lot of times people don't understand that there's so much utility that's getting built right now on the blockchain that... I believe that in the next couple of years, we'll start to see a decoupling right now on the crypto side of things. Bitcoin pretty much rules the roost. It's the king of all cryptocurrencies right now. If Bitcoin goes up, all the cryptocurrencies go up. If Bitcoin goes down, all the cryptocurrencies go down. And we're right now in the middle of another bull run that may end you know, at any point here in the future. And it could cause another crypto winters that happened from 2018 to 2020. Or it may be just a blip on the radar and things may continue to go up in value and, and continue to expand the ecosystem for years to come. We'll see. One of the really cool things that happened was El Salvador, right? The, uh, the adoption of Bitcoin on a you know, country level, you know, government actually embraced it, made it legal tender, and it really pisses everybody off now, especially the IMF, who now is forced to take payment in Bitcoin and lend in Bitcoin because it's the IMF's charter to, to uh, take payment and to lend in the, go in the government's native currency and the legal tender currency of that. So I'm not sure how that will end up playing itself out, but I'm sure that at some point here, there's going to be a lot more countries that rush in to make some type of cryptocurrency, their legal tender, rather than wait until the end when the prices are probably going to be much, much higher and it's going to be a much more difficult um, thing to do. With that being said, I do run a stake pool. I got into the Cardano ecosystem about, gosh, a year ago now and decided that the best thing to do in order to learn more and to become more involved was to, you know, run a stake pool and become a stake pool operator. So basically uh, create a node that allows um, anyone to stake their Cardano tokens. And in turn, it secures the blockchain. We place blocks into the chain and it allows everybody to uh, become more decentralized. There's about 3000 stake pool operators right now. And we happen to be one of them. So if you're looking for a stake pool and you want to stake, iStakeADA.com is the name of it. And we have a, uh, you know, we've had our stake pool running now for about four months. So as far as things go, that was it as far as the uh, the presentation, but I wanted to open it up. If you guys have any questions at all, if there's anything that you'd like to uh, know more about, I'm happy to talk to you for the next 10, 15 minutes here and uh, we can go through it. Otherwise we can call it a day. So if, you're, if you wanna unmute yourself or if you wanna put something in the chat, please do. Um, otherwise I'll, I'll, uh, I'll give you a couple minutes here. And if not, we'll, we'll wrap this thing up. I just wanted to say great presentation. You covered a lot and uh, I'm actually very, I try to keep current. And so some of the things I knew, but I was actually surprised by some of the things I didn't, especially some of the catalyst projects around gaming that you shared some insight on. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Sure. Definitely. I'm glad you got some, some new insights. I'm always looking for what's happening out there. It's great to be the community advisor. You know, fun six is going to be open up here probably I think it's going to happen right around the summit timeframe. 
And that's going to be $4 million in ADA. And then I think fund seven is going to even double that, or it's going to be six or $8 million worth of ADA that they're going to offer. But I really like the, the fact that they're opening it up to community advisors that can go out and review projects and give some feedback and, and rank things accordingly and, and give the uh, Cardano community an idea of what projects, uh, you know, look like they've got promise and, you know, which ones don't, but there was a lot out there. I mean, there was probably six or 800 different proposals that are offered now on Catalyst. And um, it's really, it's really amazing to me to see the amount of developments going on by, you know, a lot of smart people. I know that, you know, on Ethereum is, is basically where a lot of the projects were originally, um, you know, went for to go get incubated and to, uh, to figure out what they're doing. But I think a lot of them now are starting to port themselves over into the Cardano ecosystem as well. And it'll be fun to see what happens here in the next couple of months. Could you go back to that second tab just uh, so I can see? Yeah, that one. So it's called? It's called okay. Cornucopias. Yeah, it's cornucopias.io. Interesting. Oh, and they're selling NFTs, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's going to be um, kind of like a metaverse that allows uh, a lot of different, you know, role-playing type of environments. I think that that between that and AdaQuest, they were fairly similar, you know, and they, uh, they're both very early stage and, you know, they're both asking for very little amount, in my opinion, of 25 to $50,000 in terms of development for the next six months in order to get everything up and going. Um, and each one had teams of, you know, somewhere between probably four and six or seven developers that were working on things. But yeah, it was a, it's, it's always really fun to see these early stage um, projects and see how they make their way through everything. And some are going to come out winners and some of them will probably go by the wayside, but it is fun to see the, the early stages and, and what's coming into the ecosystem. Well, great. I appreciate you guys coming out for this. Again, if there's anything that you need, feel free to leave a comment. If you could give, you know, the, the thumbs up to the meetup or wherever it is that you're watching this and make sure to comment, share this with a friend. I'd love to grow the, you know, the, uh, the meet up to a point where there was, you know, a lot of good discussion, a lot of good Q and a last time we were here, we had, you know, a couple dozen people on and we went through about 15, 20 minutes worth of questions. And it was great to get a chance to talk to, to other like-minded individuals that share a, a love for Cardano and everything blockchain. So I appreciate everybody coming out and I appreciate your comments and suggestions about things. And if there's anything I can do better in the future, feel free to let me know.